I want to talk to you about a really important concept in business, but get ready because it's radical. And that concept is love. So just to be clear, I'm a business guy, and trust me, I don't use the word love lightly. I'm the author of the new book, Love is Just Damn Good Business, as well as The Radical Leap, The Radical Edge, and Greater Than Yourself. And I've been in the business of leadership development for 30 years. And I've had the opportunity to work with Microsoft, to the Hyatt, to Ernst & Young. I mean, every kind of business you can imagine. Over the last 10 years alone, the business world has spent close to a trillion dollars on leadership development. 73% of people are disengaged in their work. 10 years ago, 70%. Something is dreadfully wrong. So I think we need to do something more radical, something extreme. And that radical idea boils down to operationalizing love as a business principle. But let me be clear about this. When I'm talking about love and business, I don't mean group hugs in the elevator. I'm not talking about love as a sentiment. I'm talking about love as a discipline, as a practice. When you put all this together, it leaves us with one very obvious conclusion. Love is just damn good business. You wrote to tell me, you said, uh, hey, uh, Farber, you know that love stuff you were talking about? He said, you're right on, man. He said, I've been telling my guys this since the day I became a manager 10 years ago. And I thought you'd appreciate seeing it in his own words. Here's what he said. I've told my technicians to make the customer absolutely love you, take you home to dinner, love you, meet the wife and kids love you, because if the customer loves you, you can blow up their building. And they'll say, accidents happen. <laughs> Probably not the best business approach, by the way. But here's what this tells us about the customer experience. And this, my friends, is the, the crux of the case for love as a hardcore business principle. As business people, we want our customers to love what we do for them. Because anything short of that, we don't get a competitive advantage. If we want our customers to love what we do for them, the product, the service, or the combination of the two that we provide, the only way to really do that in a meaningful and sustainable way over time is to create a culture or an environment in our companies, in our businesses, in our clubs that people love working in. And the only way that I can do that as a leader, positional leader or otherwise, the only way that I can create that kind of culture is to love it, the business, the customer, my colleagues, myself first. So you see this all gets rather personal rather quickly. And when we can weave all that together, it shows up in the way we do business. It shows up in the impact that we have on people's lives. It shows up in the customer service experience. Joe Jaros delivered pizzas. And Joe Jaros, if you were to ask him, loved his customers. He loved his customers. Okay, so how, how do we know that? How did his customers know that? How did he show it? Here's what it looked like. He would arrive at a customer's house with a pizza, and as he walked up to the door, if he noticed, for example, that the light bulb on the porch in this customer's house was burned out. What do you think he would do? Change the light bulb. He changed the light bulb. Why would he do that? Because that's what you do when you love somebody. You help them out. Change the light bulb, here's your pizza. I guarantee you nowhere in his job description did it say change light bulb. <laughs> and then you know, he, he lives in, in Ohio, and in Ohio they have this thing. It's called um, uh, winter. 
which means snow. And if he was delivering a pizza in a snowstorm and he got to a customer's house and the walk, for those of you that have never lived in snow or experienced this, let me describe it for you. The snow piles up everywhere. The sidewalk to the front door, oftentimes you'll have, you know, you'll have drifts of three feet or more in a snowstorm blocking the way to the house. And he's got to get to the door. He's got a pizza here. That walk is snowed over. What do you think he would do? He'd shovel the walk. Shovel the walk, deliver the pizza. Change the light bulb, deliver the pizza. So you, you know what started to happen? People would call that store and they'd order a pizza and they'd also order Joe. I would like a pepperoni pizza, please, and have Joe deliver it. So pretty soon, it didn't take long for the owner of, it's a franchise organization, right? For the owner of that franchise, that particular Marcos franchise, saw what, what, what Joe Jaros was doing, and he was so impressed by Joe, you know what he did? He made him a partner in that store. Partner in that store. And now, several years later, Joe Jaros owns three Marcos franchises. Yeah? So I'm telling you, when he was delivering pizzas, it was like, I'll be a pizza delivery boy for the rest of my life. Didn't matter. He said, I love my customers. I'm going to take care of them. And he didn't do it because he thought that someday he would be given the opportunity to be an owner of a Marco store. He did it because it was the right thing to do, because that's what you do when you love somebody. And it just so happens that it's also really good business. <laughs>
everything. The chairs you're sitting on, the carpeting on the floor, the, the screens, the light fixtures, the, the, the paint on the walls, the exit signs, these are all made, there are human beings behind all of this. There are companies behind all of this. Now we look at this stuff, and that's what we think. We think stuff, right? Stuff, 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 stuff. Boring, mundane, commodity stuff. But you know what? To the leading companies, to the leading businesses in any of these arenas, no matter how boring or mundane their product or service appears to us, to the leading businesses, to them, it's anything but boring. To them, it's the most exciting stuff on the planet. And they're the ones that everybody else is always chasing after. I love this post office. Is, a, is, a, is a, the post office of love, man. This is... <laughs> That, that's a perspective. That's not inherent in, in the services of a post office. It's inherent in, in a guy like Frank. That's where it's inherent. It's inherent in all of us. It's inherent in our perspective. After she stamped, the last stamp, I asked her a question that I've asked every notary that I've ever used before. What do you think that question was? How much? What do I owe you? And she said, oh no, you don't owe me anything. This is just a service that we provide to our customers. And I said, well, Roselli, you know, I'm not a customer. And she said, oh, that's okay. Maybe you will be someday. <laughs> yeah, you know. That's pretty good, that's pretty good. So then I was struck with this inspiration to ask her this question. I thought, you know what? I can get a glimpse into the culture of this company right now. So I uh, looked around and I said, hey, Rosella, would you mind telling me, how do you like working here at Sovereign Bank? And I'm telling you folks, there was no hesitation. Her face lit up and she said, I love it. I love it, just like that. And she started telling me about that other bank that she worked for and how terrible that place was. But this place was so different because people took care of each other. And then she started talking about her customers and how her customers sometimes will stop in just to say hello, even when they have no banking to do because that's the kind of relationship that they have. And I have this odd habit that when I'm talking to somebody who's telling me something that's really relevant to my work, I like to take notes, right? So she's talking and I'm writing on the back of one of these documents that I just signed. So this is one of the things that she said to me. I'll show you word for word. One of the things she said was, I love my customers and I get great pleasure from serving them, so I'm happy. And she was explaining this kind of wonderful, virtuous cycle. She loves her customer. You know, I love them so much, and that's why sometimes they stop in just to say hello, and when they do that, it makes me happy, and I take care of them even more. Then on and on it goes. So at one point, it's just beautiful stuff, right? So at one point, I looked up at her, and I said, hey, Rosella, would you mind if I quoted you on this? And she said, would you like me to notarize it? So what do you think I said? <laughs> yes, please, that would be great. And she did. <laughs> what you're looking at here is the back of Rosella's business card. She took out her business card, flipped it over, wrote those words across the top, stamped it, pushed it across the counter to me. I picked it up, ran across the street, took a picture of it with my iPhone, stuck it in my PowerPoint deck, and the next day I showed this to the senior management team. And I said, hey folks, look what you have going on right across the street here. This is Rosella Detella. I mean, she's awesome. That's, that's my best Boston accent, sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> And the boss was so blown away by this that he ran across the street to say thank you to Rosella. And you can imagine the impact that had on her day and the impact, therefore, that had on her customers. And around and around it goes. So please, don't tell me that love has no place in business. Of course it does. It's just damn good business. Let's try a little teamwork exercise. Would you all put your hands out in front of you like so, please? 
It's going to be a very simple drill. It'll be relatively painless. The, the idea is this. We're going to see how coherent we are as a team. So we're all going to clap once at exactly the same moment. So it's going to sound like one loud thunderous clap. Okay? I'm going to be the leader. So let's all clap when I count three. On the count of three. Here we go. You ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Okay, one more time, one more time. Try it again, try it again. On the count of three, here we go. One, two, three. I still got a few of you there. All right, so let's, uh, let's analyze this for a moment, okay? So the first time around, first time around, what were you following, my words or my actions? Actions, almost, almost to, a, uh, to a person, right? But the second time around, what were you following, my words or my actions? Well, some of you were and some of you weren't, right? At least for a few of you, there was a little bit of confusion kind of setting in. It's like, what the hell does he want, man? Because I'm saying one thing, but I'm doing another, right? Now, if I kept doing that to you, pretty soon you're not going to do anything I ask you to do anymore, are you? Because you don't trust me. You don't, you, don't, you don't believe me. Here, try this. Put your finger in the air like so, if you would. See, some of you are reluctant to do that already. Okay, now take that finger and put it right here on your chin. Your chin, this is part of your face right here. That's your chin. <laughs> you even knew I was setting you up, and about a third of you still fell for that. So if I kept, if I kept doing that to you, well, if, if, I kept, if I kept doing that to you, pretty soon it's a, it's a different finger you're going to be putting in the air. That's one thing that's going to happen. But pretty soon you're, you're done with me. You're not going to do anything I ask you to do anymore. Now, that's just a cute little game. It's as old as the hills. You know, there's Simon Says and, and all of that, right? But I, I'll, I will tell you, if you magnify that a thousand times, that's what happens every day in our business. It's what happens every day at work. It's what happens whenever we step into a leadership role. People watch everything that we do. And when I say everything, I'm not exaggerating. I mean everything. Not only do they watch your body language and your facial expressions and all that, but they watch the way you spend your time, the way you allocate resources, the way you, uh, the way you interact with people, the kind of conversations that you have, and they compare it to your own words. This can't be happening. This, this, this has been, this was like, what, 30-some years later? This guitar that I sold? that I loved, that I fantasized about throughout the years, if only I can get that guitar back someday, that woman is writing to me right now, telling me she still has it? So I collected myself, and I wrote back, and I said, oh, so nice to hear from you. <laughs> and I live in San Diego now. My kids are also grown as well. And by the way, if there's any chance at all that you would be willing to sell that guitar back to me, I would love to have it back. And I hit send, and I stared at the screen. <laughs> and I waited, and it was just a few minutes later, I mean, it was really just a few minutes later, she wrote back. And she said, and this is pretty close to a quote, she said, I still remember the look on your face when I walked out of your apartment carrying that guitar. And I have never been able to play it without thinking about your pain. <laughs> so I don't play it. It sits in my closet. She said, as I recall, you sold me that guitar for $280. So I will sell it to you for $280. Plus shipping. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? And I got it back. I got it back. Would you like to see it? Yeah. It just so happens I have it right here. <laughs> you see what's going to happen next, don't you? <clears throat> so this is, uh, this is my guitar. And it represents what I suggested to you earlier. If there's something that you were passionate about in your life that you gave up on, can you bring it back? Can you bring it back? And I would suggest to you that, you know, the obvious reason for bringing it back is because it'll give you great joy. But from a leadership perspective, I'm going to suggest that you owe it 
not just to yourself, but to the people that you're leading to bring that back for yourself. Because that's where, your, that's where your joy comes from. That's where your energy comes from. That's your raw material. You need to fill up your own bucket so it can spill over into others. That's where your love comes from. May you go down in a blaze of glory. Come back in a ball of fire. May you go down in a blaze of glory. Come back in a ball of fire. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.